In the prior video, I showed you how to take Bubbles' pre-built element for the tab element and uh, showed you how to make some modifications to that to add some more tabs. But let's say you actually want to flex your muscle and you want to build this from scratch. Let's go ahead and work our way through that process. So I'm just going to delete everything there and notice my workflows, they're all going to disappear down to a couple of items and just for that last one there, and we'll get rid of those as well. So we've got a blank slate there. Now let's start by saying we're going to draw what is effectively a host for this. And what I'm going to do is to say, uh, this is group tabs. And what this is going to do is to act as a container. Just for a visual example, I'm going to make the background color of that gray. So within this, what I'm going to do is to draw several additional groups. So, but before I do that, what I want to do is set up a state. So I want to create a new thing and I'm going to call this state tab. If I click too quickly, just to show you that again, I selected the element, clicked on the I tab here and hit add a new custom state. So when I do that, new pop-up shows up and I have the ability to define that state around lots of different types of things. But for the sake of our example, what I'm going to do is to say uh, this state is actually driven by a text value. So, uh, so let's go ahead and set that up. And what I'm going to do is to set a default value to this. So it's always going to default to a certain value uh, when either it's empty or the page loads. So I'm going to have this one be called uh, start. So now let's get down to business and drawing those groups. So first I'm going to draw our first group, which will be start. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to be able to create conditional logic that I can use over and over again. So this one, as I mentioned, will be our first group and it's going to be called group start. And again, this is just cosmetic up here. This isn't actually changing anything in our application. But what is, is when we start setting up our conditional logic here. So what I need to do is to go and reference back to our parent thing to pull that state because the state is going to control whether this is visible or not. So what we're going to do is to say when group tabs, and that's the parent thing here, uh, when groups tabs tab is st uh, start, we're going to say this is visible and we need to make sure that that's checked there. And what we're going to do is to put up inverse logic here to say when it is not. So I just copied my condition here. So uh, copy expression and I pasted it here and then I negated it, uh, changed it from is to is not. And I'm going to change that to this element is visible is no. I want to make sure that I'm checking, uh, or rather unchecking the box, this element is visible on page load. This is one of the things that trips people up so, so much when they're uh, getting started with tabs is that they leave that checked and they wonder why certain things that are still appearing. And that's part of the value of also setting up these other states for when is and is not applies. So let's also draw a first button here. Uh, to say when this button is clicked, it's going to set things to start. And so what we want to do is to start edit workflow here. And what we're going to do is go down to element actions, set state. And remember, we're setting the state on the group tabs, that parent item. And we're going to choose the custom state tab. And we're going to have it set the state as start. So now when that button is clicked, and let's go ahead and preview in our editor here, see what happens. So because I had that default set up here, it's showing uh, showing this start group here. But when I click this button again, it's going to show that there. But let's go ahead and give us some labeling in here so we can see a little bit better about what's going on. And now I'm going to go ahead and copy what I have here and use it for another thing. So we'll just uh, really simply, we can just copy that because we're not copying any workflows there and we'll paste this. And this will be our second group here. And we'll call this group middle. And 
And so let's go ahead and rename those there. And because I copied that, I'm able to take advantage of that conditional logic that I already set up. I'm also going to rename the text here to middle so it's more readily apparent as to what it is that we're doing. And as well, I can now copy with workflows because I want to get that workflow that we created there. And to now change this to set as middle. And so this is going to change the value to middle here. And really quickly, I'm going to go through and do it one more time for end. So just change that and change these values here. And also update that here. Workflows. And we'll paste, oops, click too quickly. Copy with workflows and paste that here. Uh, looks like something is amiss there. There we go. All right, and we'll label that end. And also set that to end here. Now, when I do that, and I'm going to go ahead and change our state here so it doesn't actually have a default, so it's easier to see what's happening here. So when we click Preview here, we should see. Now, when I click Start, it's going to show Group Start, Middle, and End. So I can click through those things there. And just to explore this step by step here, so let's click Middle. And so it's going to set the state, and the value is Middle. And now it's going to show that group here. And let's go ahead and click on the inspector, see what's happening there. And let me look here. So uh, because groups tabs tab is middle, then this is now visible. So really simply, now you have a way of setting up your own uh, custom tabbed groups. And you can continue to customize and iterate from here. All right, happy building.